Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about our routines and schedules and sticking to them really benefiting our pet parrots or not. Generally speaking, using a routine or sticking to a strict schedule with your pet parrot builds an expectation that you will stick to that for life. Birds normally outlive us, so this can set us up for pure disaster. An example of this would be feeding your bird at the exact same time every single day. They learn to expect it, they may start to scream for it, go back and forth, just do some unwanted or unacceptable behaviors in the human book that become really obnoxious and just make it so that you're trying to beat the bird <laughs> before it can, well, not like physically beat it, but you know, race the bird to be able to not do that behavior before you can feed it so it doesn't scream. I actually experienced this by keeping my birds out on my parents' property. They have more acreage than I do, and so we have some aviaries out there. And my mom one time was like, hey, can you go feed the birds before your dad gets home? Make sure that it's by this time so they don't start screaming because it really sets him off. And I thought, oh no, you fell into a routine that built an expectation that now got these undesirable behaviors and the birds have kind of started training you. So building expectations that you can't really live up to in the long term can be incredibly detrimental, especially when your bird then goes to someone else. Think about it as though we're trying to raise really resilient, awesome birds that know deep down they are birds. And if they ever had to be rehomed, that it would be easy to do that so that they wouldn't have these terrible habits or qualities that people would be like, oh, I don't really want a screamer. I don't really want a biter. I don't really want a plucker. We want our birds to really thrive in captivity. And we want to make sure that if they ever do need to be rehomed, that it's something that they will handle with ease. I don't say this to be a total downer, but a fun fact is that parrots are the third most popular pet in the entire world, but the number one most rehomed. So I say this because it's likely, and although we don't foresee those circumstances, a lot of the project birds I work with here on the channel are coming to me from circumstances that nobody would have ever been able to guess or foresee. So life happens, guys. The one routine or schedule that I'm really on par with sticking to is a sleep schedule. Birds should be getting a nice uninterrupted 12 hours of sleep. And I think if you can be very consistent about that, that is the most ideal thing to be scheduled or routine about. Now, you can modify this based on your particular schedule. For example, when my husband and I were performing Magic on Cruise Ships, we had our birds backstage and they were part of the show. And our show schedule was at seven and nine. So we did shows at seven and nine, which wouldn't really put us to bed until around close to midnight. So we just moved our birds schedule to go to bed at midnight and wake up at noon. This worked for us. It's not your traditional time frame that most people would work, but you can always change your 12 hours to be something where you get to spend time with your bird based on your work schedule or your lifestyle. A good thing to be inconsistent about, or I like to call consistent inconsistency, is when you feed your birds. So going back to my previous story about how my mom got my birds into an expectation or routine, and then if she didn't meet that or was late, they were screaming their heads off, it's really good to have some variable time where your birds aren't sure and aren't sure when to expect things. That way they don't build up that expectation and then act out when you don't meet it. So my my rule of thumb is to feed my birds at any point in the morning between when their light timer comes on, which is for me is around 6.30 in the morning, all the way to noon. So in that time frame, they're getting fed. They don't know when in that time frame because I keep it varied. So some days it might be at 8 a.m., some days it might be at 11.30, some days it might be right at 6.30 when the light comes on, sometimes 7.30. It really, really depends. It's all over the board so that there is no expectation and therefore there's no screaming. <laughs> Now my evening routine of feeding my birds, my basic rule of thumb is anytime after 3 p.m. So anytime after 3 p.m., I can feed my birds their evening meal, 3 p.m. and I would say a half hour before dark. I don't like feeding them any later than that because I don't feel like that's adequate time for them to really eat their meal and go find their favorite spot to sleep and 
all of that. So I like for them to have time to do that. So yeah, anytime after 3 p.m. is kind of my rule of thumb. Now you can change this based on your bird's feeding schedule. And I know a lot of people like to offer their bird a midday snack. Um, so depending on your schedule, just make sure that you have some variation. Don't feed your birds at the exact same time every single day. If you only have a 30 minute window that you can mess with, mess with it to its full ability to avoid creating that unrealistic expectation. Here's another thing that is great to remain consistent about or have a routine slash schedule on, and that is what you feed your bird. So it's really good to feed your bird the best. And I know a lot of people are just like, ooh, variety is best, so I'm just gonna feed whatever I have in the fridge, chop it up and give it to my bird. That's not ideal. We want you to put some thought into this and really have only the best foods going into these teeny tiny crops that we have to work with. So I feed my seasonal feeding system in the morning, my pellets in the evening. You can swap this around based on your schedule. Again, if you're gone most of the day and you don't want to leave that fresh food around thinking that they may not eat it all or it may go bad, you can definitely feed pellets in the morning instead. But I think being consistent and having a schedule and or routine where you're making your fresh food on a schedule so that you don't run out. You're ordering your pellets on schedule so you, again, you don't run out and have to go buy some crappy version from the pet store. I think those are really, really important routines or schedules to keep in mind for your bird and something to remain consistent about. Now, where I like adding in variety is that my seasonal feeding system changes with the seasons. So there's the variety there. But I also like adding my own freshly grown microgreens and or sprouts. So I grow all of that stuff myself and I love adding a variety of those. So I'm always changing up which ones I'm using. And if you want a discount code, you can use my code birdtricks at hamama.com. They have some really amazing and easy uh, growing kits that are just the simplest things to use. You don't have to babysit your microgreens with this. So again, being consistent with your diet that you do offer is really important so that you have stable blood work coming in at your annuals and your vet has a very good understanding of where your bird is getting all of its nutrients from. Makes it really, really easy to see any changes that you may need to make at your annual appointment based on your bird's blood work. Another thing to remain routine or schedule about is how often you offer your bird bathing opportunities. I think a lot of people get a little too inconsistent about this, but offering your bird bathing opportunities, if you can, every single day is ideal because your bird most likely won't take you up on it every single day. So the more you can get your bird bathing, the better. There's some species that are way more into it than others. I know my African gray of all my birds is like, yeah, maybe once a month. Um, so I have to encourage her to do that more. Whereas my macaws were like three times a day. <laughs> it's good for me. So it really depends. But I think being consistent about giving your bird the bathing opportunities is incredibly important to their health. And also sunlight. I think sunlight is very underrated, especially for birds in captivity. We kind of think like, oh, you're in our house. I have windows, it's good enough. It's really not. We need to get our birds outside in the sunlight, but in a safe way because they're still prey animals, right? So we don't wanna put them at risk just to get them some sun. So having any screened in areas, aviaries, netted areas, stuff like that where they can be outside safely is really ideal and being consistent about it. Sunlight is, like I said, very underrated for pet parrots and they need it for their health. Another thing that you can be very routine about is changing up toys and or your bird's environment. So switching out toys. Now I'm probably consistently inconsistent about toys. I just do it as needed because my birds definitely go through their toys. If you have a bird though that's not necessarily going through their toys, I would one, look at the type of toys you're offering and maybe where you're putting them. See if you can change that up to encourage your bird to be more interested. But I know that a basic good rule of thumb is to change up perching and toys every week. That would be the most ideal just changing up your bird's bedroom so to speak in a fun way that's really engaging and is offering enrichment I think being consistent about that is really fantastic and if you have the consistent inconsistent approach from me where it's just kind of like oh they destroyed this I'm adding this I probably do it mm, twice a week 
I also rotate my birds based on certain aviaries. I'll move them into different aviaries, which is a whole other approach to this. So making sure that you have some sort of routine that you stick to for ensuring that your bird's environment changes and is constantly engaging is a really, really important one to have. And lastly, a cleaning routine. I think this is really, really important. You need to know how often you are really gonna get in there and deep clean things. I know that I can definitely let this fall by the wayside where I keep prolonging it and thinking, I'm gonna do it on a really good weather day and then something comes up. So making sure that you're consistent about this, if it's once a week, if it's once a month, really depends on how many birds you have, what type of birds you have. I know it's much easier for me to deep clean the stuff for my tiny birds than it is for my large birds who are a lot messier, but making sure that you hold yourself accountable and maybe you offer to help a bird friend deep clean their stuff in exchange for them helping you. I think that that makes it a little bit more fun to do. Not that it's fun in the first place, but you know, we all have that friend that actually enjoys cleaning. So invite them over. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is having a routine or a schedule based around training your bird or interacting. I think this is where we all fall into accidental routines and schedules that create those unwanted expectations. Most of us are used to having certain open time slots where we can spend time with our birds and our birds come to expect it. So for example, a lot of people, as soon as they get home, go and let their bird ride out. And that becomes a very high expectation where the bird learns to pace, to screech in excitement or um, anticipation. And it just becomes this predictable thing. And then when we can't do it, because say we come home and somebody is making dinner or we need to make dinner and we can't have our bird out for safety reasons. And the bird's like, hey man, this is my normal thing. I'm going to freak out and make you feel really guilty about this decision, then we start feeling really bad. And that's where we get into sticky situations where we start letting our birds out out of guilt, even though the environment's not conducive to having them out. So I think we need to be really, really careful. And I guess the point of this video is just for you guys to understand how easy it is to fall into routines or schedules that can kind of backfire on your bird's behavior. So one thing that I really believe in here at Bird Tricks is quality over quantity. So this means that the amount of time isn't as important as the quality of time that you spend with your bird. I would rather you be spending a shorter amount of time with your bird that's making your relationship better than long amounts of time with your bird that's actually making it go backwards or just stay the same. What I mean by this is a lot of people take their bird out just based on pure guilt of having it in a cage. If that's the case, maybe see if you can design a bird room or an enclosed area that just feels really good to have your bird in so that you don't feel that horrible guilt that makes you make decisions that maybe aren't in the best interest of your bird. Sometimes we think that just because the bird's out of the cage that it's suddenly much happier, but if you have to chase your bird and corral it to go back into the cage, you're definitely not getting to a better place with your relationship with that bird. Whereas if you spend shorter amounts of time with your bird, but you easily get your bird to go back into its cage by choice because you've handled the training session really, really well, that means that your bird will easily come out and easily go back in next time versus learn to avoid you because it was so traumatic the time before. So I just wanna make sure that you guys are really making decisions that make your relationship better and aren't just making decisions that are motivated by guilt. I hope this video really helped you. If you're interested in learning more about birds in general, their care, their training, enrichment, how to bond with your bird and what diet to feed, check out my website at birdtricks.com and I'll see you in the next video.